This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. My first guest today is Jeannie Ludlow from Alpena County Library. Hi, Jeannie. Hello, Nancy. It's so good to have you here and I know that at the library it was absolutely crazy through the holiday season and everything was busy and you had so many wonderful programs and children's and adults programs <laughs> and it was you know I guess business as usual. It was business as usual and January is shaping up to be more of the same. Okay so tell me what's happening. Um, <clears throat> this January, last year we were up for a mini grant to digitize the Alpena yes. News from 1899 to 1910 and we came in second but it means we missed um, so we're up for it again this year and everyone in the community all our patrons will be able to participate what it's based on is um, if you tweet and we will uh, advertise the hashtags it, it gains us one point if you send a postcard to Central Michigan University's Clark Historical Library who is sponsoring the mini grant um, that's worth 100 points. That's so, what I did last time. <laughs> so we at the library will have postcards available. Uh, when you come in to check out material, we'll ask you to sign one, and uh, we will mail it off for you. Uh, it just helps facilitate the, um, the winning of the grant. And we have all of the Elpina Argus and Elpina News on microfilm, so it's accessible, okay. but it's cumbersome to use it. Digitize oh. would be searchable, it would be awesome. And um, then of course we would just continue to go forward and continue to digitize. You know, and I'd like to encourage anyone, if you don't go to the library on a daily basis, maybe you never go there, it's still very important for our community, for um, our people that go to school, people doing reports, you know, yes. get, get in there, pick up that postcard, pick up one for every family member and get that sent out so that we can get this very important service taken care of this well, year. Well, thank you. And it's going to partic the participation has a beginning and an end due date. It's January 19th okay. through the 26th. Just stop in at the circulation okay. desk and we will have them ready. Um, if you uh, have a spouse at home and want to take one for them to sign also, um, and you can either bring it back or mail it in yourself, it works either way. Okay, great. So after that? Um, a, a program that the Special Collections are, is doing is very near and dear to my heart. It's um, based on wolves that have, are living in Lower Michigan right Ooh. now. Uh, it's going to be on Wednesday, January 27th at uh, 6.30. Uh, Michael uh, McComley is going to be making the presentation. And each of the Special Collections programs that we've been doing once a month have been very well attended. And I have a feeling that this one on wolves will be exceptionally. Oh, I can imagine it will be. So I think come early and plan to stay late. There'll be questions and answers afterwards. And it's just shaping up to be a wonderful program. You know, that's one of those stories of folklore, them coming across on the ice, and you hear about this and you hear about that. So it'll be very interesting to get it from an authority, and a person who really knows the story. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Um, also in January, of course, it's the beginning of tax season. Yes, it is. <laughs> And um, I would like to forewarn uh, the public that uh, the IRS is uh, reducing the number of paper forms and okay. instruction booklets. Uh, you're welcome to come to the library. We will go on the website for you. We will search for what you need and we will print it off. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to charge 20 cents a copy. No problem. And uh, we do have an address if you want and a phone number to call if you want paper forms and instruction booklets sent to your house. However, I do warn you that the wait times on those calls uh, can be considerable. Okay. Um, I, and also the AARP okay. will be uh, in February. Uh, they use the month of January to learn all the new tax laws. Uh, they will be filling out for free okay. uh, people's taxes. Uh, it's usually Monday morning, Wednesday evening, and Saturday morning. Okay, and that's a first come, first serve, simple tax returns, please. Yes, exactly. You know, sometimes people come in with a whole box full of stuff. That's not what this was intended for. No, we would like everything to be organized before you come. Okay. And uh, there is um, a criteria of what 
the kinds of things that you will need. Okay. Uh, we don't have it right now, but uh, by the third week of January, the circulation staff will have a list. Okay. And you can call to ask to make sure that you are bringing everything that's needed for uh, your taxes to be okay. filled out. And they are e-filed, so it should be quick and easy. Yes, painless and easy. Yeah, and I think that's what the government is trying to lead us to. <laughs> we have about two minutes left. Um, another thing we have uh, play dates for children. It's uh, age zero to 24 months. Okay. And it is exactly that. Uh, upstairs in the conference room, um, there's no registration. You simply come. It's on Jan the first one is January 14th from 10 to 11. Each month, it's one day on a Thursday. And um, Mary picks a theme, has toys out. Uh, it's, it's a sharing, a socialization, and just uh, having a great time with other kids uh, your age and uh, just meeting and making new friends. You know, and I've seen pictures on Facebook and heard people talk about it because there's really no programs out there for children that age, um, like a preschool program or anything. So this is really wonderful, a chance for kids to get together and, um, you know, mix with other kids. It's very important that they start doing that prior to the preschool years. I would agree. And it's, it's kind of a lapse. I mean, obviously, the very young children are very close to mom. But if you're sitting next to another mother who has somebody else mm -hmm. in her lap, <laughs> friendships can be made. Yes, they can. And they can be having a great time. Okay. Um, we also have computer classes. Of course, the Christmas season uh -huh. is the gifts of Kindles and all the other electronics, the smartphones and what have you. And Nancy has a, a series of about 10 different classes that she will offer. They're at different times. They're two, hour, two hours in length one session each and um, it will go from introduction to Facebook, Android smartphones, uh, using Excel, using Microsoft Word, very basic how to turn the computer on. <laughs> and you know they really are for everyone because when I've talked to people too they learn things there that I didn't know about and I've been using a computer for years so. Mm -hmm. I feel if I take a class and learn one new trick or one new thing I've spent my time well. Yes. And there is a slight charge for those classes. Yes, there's a $5 fee. They're two hours in length, uh, a one-time deal. And um, the times of day and evening uh, vary. So okay. you would have to, if you want to visit our website, look at the class descriptions, choose the ones that you feel you would benefit from, mm -hmm. or call the library. Okay. And uh, we will uh, review the classes for you and then sign up. And unfortunately, we have... 10 laptops, so we have each class mm. is limited to 10 people. Okay. And so they, go, they fill up very quickly. They do fill up quickly. So I would call as soon as um, they're posted. 356-6188, give them a call, get registered for the classes. Um, yes. We have to wrap up now, but I want to thank you very much for being here and looking forward to next month when I hear some more exciting things happening at the library. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back with Kat Tomaszewski from Besser Museum following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Kat Tomaszewski from Besser Museum. Good morning, Kat. Good morning. So I know you just finished the season of light. How did that go? Oh, it was great. We saw so many school kids from all over Lower Michigan and the look on their faces as they come through and see the big Christmas trees and they learned all about snow and what makes each snowflake unique Ooh. and they loved it. They loved it. Very good, and I know that this is the 50th anniversary, so you've got a lot of wonderful things planned for that. Yes, this new year um, is really a year that the museum is trying to reinvent their image. We just launched our new website. Yes. And you can get to that at bestermuseum.org. And what's really great about the new website is it's fresh, it's new, it's bright and colorful, and it has everything that you need to know about the museum you can get to it right from our home page. All of our new exhibits, our classes, all of our museum literature, like the historic scavenger hunt that we did this yes. past summer, that's still available. We still have the booklets. If you want a, like a tangible booklet, you can come into the museum. You can go online. There's a whole bookshelf of things that you can look at and download if you want. Perfect. And I know that one of the things you're doing, you're doing a capital campaign. You know, people are sending in wonderful donations, and we appreciate that. If you didn't get yes. an envelope for that, give us a call. We'll make sure that you get it. Yes. Keep them coming. And one of the things you're going to do is upgrade the planetarium. Yes. Um, this year, we are fundraising for our 50th anniversary campaign, as you said. And the biggest goal of that is to really transform and elevate the planetarium.
So we have the original planetarium in the museum from 1965, yes. which is so wonderful. It's parts of it still work, and you can still get the whole sky. But there are so many more capabilities that we can have if we upgrade to digital. We can start showing things and incorporating classes from the college. For the high school, we're no longer committed to just the sky. Yes. You have all of that. It's almost like you're the one driving the space shift as you go through space. But you have um, science and anatomy and all of the cellular things that go on through the body. Art, you can teach art and history with this new 3D dome, so it's really, really neat. And it'll be a drawing point. It'll bring people from all over northern Michigan because it's one of the few that's in the area at all. And when we get it all in place and everything, I mean, what the classrooms will be able to get out of that is phenomenal. Yes, and we can even build Taylor to, um, programs based on local history and local things that are going on with this new system, which is really fantastic. Okay, and you're going to have some new hours too. Yes, so the museum is now open on Sundays from 12 to 4, and then Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5. And then NOAA as well, they're open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and then again, 12 to 5 on Sundays. So perfect, so you can come and go to NOAA, then come to the library or vice versa, and and get to see all the fun stuff. And people that don't go to these places that are in their own backyard, shame on you. You don't realize what is out there. There is so much. And especially at the museum, we're getting ready to open our Salvador Dali exhibit. Yes. That's February 5th is the opening reception for that. And then Bruno Herzl is on January 23rd. Ooh, and what's Bruno gonna bring? Well, I haven't quite seen all of the things that he's gonna be bringing, but I've seen a few pieces of artwork and they are amazing. He is an amazing artist. His story, his biography is so interesting. If anybody wants to check that out, it's out on our website right now, right on the home page. Okay. All right, anything else exciting happening? Just a lot of um, changes as we get ready to launch a new image for the museum next year. We're no longer just a history museum. We're art, history, and science, and there's stuff for all ages, young kids, teenagers, all the way through school up until everything, just everything. Okay, and the Salvador Dali, let's go back to that for a <laughs> moment. So what kind of uh, things are we going to see in that exhibit? So this is really neat. Um, we have quite a few paintings, and last year we had a fundraiser where people could adopt a dolly. And so the community came together to do that. And so we, on February 5th, will have that opening reception. It starts at 5.55 p.m. Okay, and people who are members of the museum get to come to those receptions for free. Uh, yes, most of our receptions are free. The Salvador Dali actually has just our regular admission fee just regular, attached okay. to it. All right. So which is really reasonable for our admission. It's just $5 for adults. And then kids and seniors are $3. And veterans and children under five are all free. And you know, the wonderful thing about the events that you do, for example, um, Season of Light, the wonderful things you did, it gets young people in our community, you know, into the museum to see the artwork, to see the displays that, you know, maybe their families haven't brought them there and they're not going to. So I would encourage, you know, all the classrooms in the area, you know, do, do fundraisers, do whatever you have to do. Get those kids into the museum so that they can share in the history of our area because I know after my grandchildren have gone there that they talk about it for hours and days, you know, Grandma, remember, Grandma, remember. So it's something that's very important. It is, and what's neat with our new website is you can come to the museum and then go home, and we are working on creating a virtual mini museum online. Ah. So after you come, you can go home and show your grandparents and your friends what you saw, and we have activity sheets that some of our interns have worked on that really help um, reinforce everything that these kids are learning at the museum. They can take them home and do them. They can do them at the museum. So it's really neat, and that's all available on our website. Okay, and we already talked about fundraising, so if you want to start the new year out right, you know, we'd be very happy to take your donation, something really good to help your community. And secondly, volunteers. We always need volunteers. Yes, especially this first week of January as we're coming into it, as we take down all of the Christmas oh, stuff. It's yes. so sad to see it go down, but with everything that's coming this year, it's, it's exciting, too. 
So anytime anyone wants to volunteer, we look for people who want to work with our collections. Um, sometimes just we need someone to sit out there and watch the phone and listen for that because we have people coming in and just somebody who wants to talk to people or cleaning or working with the school kids. There's so many avenues to volunteer. So call 356 Two two oh two. Yes. Three five six two two oh two. I'm saying too many phone numbers today. <laughs> and um, you know, someone always answers the phone. It's a real person. They'll answer the phone, and and you can um, set up an appointment to come in and talk about volunteering or what yes. you can do to help with this fiftieth um, anniversary as we go about all the changes that's going to be happening. Yes. I want to thank you very much for being here, Kat, and I look you. forward to talking to you again next month. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College and we're pleased to have as our guest this morning Bob Tosh, CAD CAM, CAD -CAM technology instructor at ACC. Welcome Bob. Thanks. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So you have a lot of good things going on in your Lots area. Lots of great things. Yes. Let's start with the, let's start with the money. Yes, the money's good. <laughs> so tell us about this uh, uh, foundation check you received a couple weeks ago. Very special. Yeah. Um, there's a, a ha Gene Haas Education Foundation. Uh, they give uh, $10,000 checks or up to a $10,000 check to community colleges. You can apply every year but once you get an award you, you you can't apply for five years and this is the second one we've got and it was a check for ten thousand dollars for scholarships for students going into uh, advanced manufacturing careers and uh, we basically got the check and then decided you know to share the wealth um, split it up for five one thousand dollar scholarships for coming this fall and five one thousand dollar scholarships for students for next fall for the year after so kind of trying to get students that they're interested in this, kind of give them a little, you know, help pay for their textbooks and pay for some schooling and stuff like that. Outstanding. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thanks. Thanks. So that was your work and you did the submission and, yep. and they came to the office and they had a check. Yes. And I forgot about it because <laughs> I, I submitted it in, in September, October. That's the deadline. And I, I did it. You know, I said, oh, I haven't done that in five years. Time to submit again. And I forgot all about it. And then I get the phone call and he's like, oh, wow. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Good for the students. So, yes, good for the students yes. and good for you on their behalf. Now, we're hearing a lot on the state level and I think locally, people are saying that manufacturing is coming back. And would you concur? Yes, that right now there's a huge demand. I mean, they're growing. I know some local companies have pretty much doubled in size over the last several years uh, by hiring people. And, and then there's also a lot of retirements. I know several students are getting jobs. I think all, all of my sophomores are working and, and, you know, I don't know about my freshmen yet. I haven't found that out. But, but there's a lot of, in Michigan overall, I mean, there's, um, as of last week, there was uh, 686 jobs for, for machinists in Michigan, and that's huge. You know, just in northern Michigan, there's over, over 53 jobs just in northern Michigan. And, and, you know, so there's a lot of demand as companies are gearing back up. And then plus they have a lot of retirements. One of my students that works at a local company he hired in a year ago, and he said he's already 15 from the bottom of the seniority list and they're going to have 10 people retire this year and 10 people retire next year and 10 people retire the year after. And he's like, you know, in three, four years, I'll be the middle of the seniority list with all the retirees. Yes. And so, does he like his work? Loves his work. You know, he's got a play. He actually lives out by me, out, out uh, where my camp is. I, I saw him at, during deer season. He lives out uh, Grand, by Grand Lake. And he says, man, this is great. I'm living here. I've got a house. I've got a wife. I've got kids. Yeah. It's great stuff. Yeah. It is a career for people who want to stay in Northeast Michigan. Yeah. yeah for, Absolutely. Correct. So when you're out, I'm veering off a little bit here, but when you're out there recruiting, and I know you do a lot of that, uh, which is commendable, a lot of the tech faculty do, what is it that you can tell folks that don't have much of a uh, background in manufacturing that's really um, interesting and pertinent about uh, that career choice? Um, if, if you like working with your hands, and if you like working with computers, there's a lot of, you know, working with your hands, working with with computers, a lot of computer skills. It's fairly high tech. There's computer programming, uh, CAD design, tool design involved in it, and and it and it's and it's clean and it, it isn't like it was even when I started. It, it was it was getting better, but but some of these shops, I mean, well, they're cleaner than my garage. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, they're just doing. I know one of my students works at a medical company over on the other side of the state, and you could eat off the floor. I mean, it's that clean. And, and, and the new machines are all enclosed and it isn't, you know, so you're not getting any of the coolant or anything on, you know, or 
mist, it's all, it's all you know, environmentally safe and everything. So it's a lot, a lot better than yeah. 40 years ago. I think there was a, an errant messaging uh, that went out that manufacturing careers were hard, uh, dangerous, and dirty, and, um, and they didn't pay well, and none of those were true. No, no. And none of those are true. No, I mean, I, I, the machines, the capabilities of the machines, you know, when I started out, it was a lot of turning the handles and, and cranks by hand, you know, 35 years ago. And now, you know, you're programming the machine, the machine's doing all the work, which frees me up to drink more coffee. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of machines, yes. you have uh, three new beauties yeah. in your area. Can you describe those for viewers so they can get an idea of what yeah. that is and what they do? Uh, one of them is a, a multitasking lathe, which a, a lathe basically turns around parts, but it also has milling cutters that come in from the side. You can drill holes on the parts, which is basically a done in one. You can get the part where before you'd have to go to several machines, you can do it all in one machine. Um, and we've been teaching students how to program those machines for about 10 years, but now we actually have one. And it's the little brother to the machines that local companies are buying. I mean, they're buying the, 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 the ones that are two and three sizes larger than this. So we now have the ability to check the programs, make sure they work, and teach students how to set up and run those machines. And the other one is, is, is a vertical mill, kind of like a Bridgeport mill, but with a big computer on it, um, that where you can write some programs that, you know, I mean, last... Last year, we wrote a program for one part that was 32,000 lines of code on one of our older machines. And, and, it, and it got it done, but it took a long time. And the new machines, you can just process this stuff so much faster. Wow. So students who graduate from the program you're running uh, will learn how to, co to do code, <coughs> for, code mach yep. for machines that can make parts of that sophistication. Yeah. And my, my sales, I talked to my sales guy. He says he sells four to five of these machines per month in Northeast Michigan. And he has over, there's over 800 machines of this type, this company's brand, just this company's brand installed in Northern Michigan. Wow. So there's, and, and he said, I can't go into a single company that doesn't have at least one. And some of them will have 25 or 30. So, you know, we're training them on the machines that local companies are using. And that's an important point. It is. It's really important. So the implication of that, just to, just to close that loop, is that you're training people on the, on the machines that they will use if and they go yes. into northern Michigan workplaces. northern Michigan companies, companies in Alpena. Outstanding. So you have, good, you have good connections with employers? Yes, all over northern Michigan. We have the only, Alpena Community College has the only program between Saginaw and Marquette. So if you're a company between Saginaw and Marquette and you need employees, they're calling me. You know, it doesn't matter if you're Petoskey or Greenbush, you know, I mean, or Alpena. If they're looking for somebody, they'll call me and say, yeah, here's a good student. Outs or here's a really good student. Yeah. Outs I have one student who's working in Charlevoix right now. Good. And, and he came from Charlevoix. He's, he's from Charlevoix, so he's working, and he hopefully will finish up this spring and be done. So they come from around the state to get in, the, in yeah, your program. Pretty much all over northern Michigan. Outstanding. T tell the viewers, if you would, the combined value or the retail cost <laughs> of the two new pieces of equipment you've got, if, a rough estimate? Um, well, the lathe cost more than my house. That was a little over $100,000. Uh, the mill listed out at about forty four, forty five thousand. 45000 Outstanding. You know, and then there was the automated inspection machine that was about 40 some thousand also. So, Bob, thank you very much. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're uh, excited by the, the uh, programming at Alpena Community College. Uh, Bob's work is commendable. Uh, we thank you for watching. Bob, we thank you for oh, what yeah. you do for students. And we'll see you next week for, uh, at Talk of the Town. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.